This is the first time Chinook crews have been able to train together in this way. Using up-to-date state-of-the-art technology, they're able to fly in different weather conditions and environments to replicate scenarios they could face whilst on operation, without even leaving the base. This system will work um, in exactly the same way that the real Chinook will work, um, and it allows for the first time the crewmen to operate guns, to uh, lift up underslung loads in a real environment, operate the winch, um, use the radios, and all done without leaving the ground. So at the moment all we're doing is um, practicing our deck landing skills um, on this is a replication of Queen Elizabeth, uh, our new aircraft carrier for the Navy. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty realistic, uh, the environment that we can operate in. And we can change the weather, we can bring the cloud down, we can increase the turbulence, we can do everything to make it as difficult and as realistic as possible so that the guys can train in here before they actually go out to the, air, the aircraft carrier for the first time. Yeah, two good lights in the cabin. Roger. The technology allows them to switch between different landscapes of the UK, Afghanistan, Sierra Leone and Norway and test the skills of both the rear and flight deck by linking them together to feel like they're in the same aircraft. So this is my normal flying helmet with some additional extras. Uh, this pack at the rear relates to these discs and those discs talk to the pack and that then tells the computer system where I'm looking in the cabin area. The benefits of the simulator is that we haven't had anything like this before, especially for my trade. We can now fire the weapons from the, both positions that we work in and we can also use winches and have jets and everything fly around us and we can interact with it a bit more better as a crew for a crew environments. I just put my helmet on. Get the monocles in position and now we'll go and fire the weapon. Yeah, so at the moment we are uh, simulating that we're flying through Afghanistan, flying through the green zone. Uh, you can see the River Helmand just uh, out to the six o'clock from my vision. And we've got the towns and another helicopter following us through. Uh, if we want to, we can have uh, missile injects or sapphire come towards us and we can engage it as we would in a theatre of operations. We're going towards a, a fob at the moment. Uh, in the six o'clock, I can see a compound. Uh, we've got some tracer coming towards us. I'm engaging the enemy. And via the simulation and the discs, I can see where the fall of shot comes from, from the weapon system. And then we're flying away safely down the Helmand River, away from the contact. The training facility was built following a £53 million contract with Lockheed Martin in 2015, with the first simulator going live in October this year. We uh, hire quite a lot of people who are ex-military, who come from that background, who understand what the challenges of doing these roles are. All of the instructors who are working here in the facility, although they're civilian instructors, they were all from the military. They all know the role, they know the challenges, and they're really passionate about getting it right. And, and simulation provides a level of training that you just can't do in the real world because you're not really going to have fighters from another country coming up uh, and, and, and trying to attack you, but we can do that with computer-generated forces and we can do that inside the simulator to make sure that these crews are prepared for any mission in any environment that they might encounter. This modern way of training is invaluable for future operations. The latest crew to go through this are deploying to Mali in the coming months on Operation Newcomb.